In this video, we're going to be covering general overview of the different type of vacuum tubes or electron tubes you'll find in normal electronics, older electronics and stuff that you happen to run across. And I'll give you a general breakdown of the different types here. Alright, starting from oldest to newest. Whoops. The oldest type, generally the old 4-pin directly heated type, have a base that looks like this. Stuff like the 01A and like the Silvertone 201A and stuff. These were what is normally used in the earliest, oldest radios. Of course, all they had back then was the directly heated triode, so two filament pins and one grid pin and one plate pin yielded a standard, pretty much standard four pin design. That's what you see in most older, old battery operated radios and stuff. And then comes the five, six, and seven pin tubes that you often see in the next generation of radios. Of course, by this time that's coming out with indirectly heated tubes that was designed to be used in AC powered sets. And it was also coming out with uh, tetrodes and pentode designs, which needed more than the standard four pins on the bottom. So like this one here, tetrode, two heater pins, accelerator grid pin, plate, and they have the grid coming out to cap on the top. And these will usually run in the 5 pin, 6 pin, and 7 pin varieties. Here's a 6 pin and a 7 pin variety here. While the later ones after that, they pretty much standardized to the 8 pin octal base with like this one here or this one here usually either glass top or metal top tubes with both with the same general base sometimes pins missing that unused in that tube so they just leave them off stuff and plus or minus some cobwebs. But that uh, came before the, uh, well, came after the five, six, and seven pins, and it was pretty much standardized base for a good span of years. Then they started coming out in the attempts at miniaturization. The uh, seven and nine pin miniature tubes which is so ubiquitous among a lot of the later electronics stuff of course anybody that's dealt with tubes is pretty much familiar with these and in amongst that time they also come out with what is called a loctal tube an octal locking tube which has a center pin, a center guide pin with a little rib on it to allow a locking function when you push it in so you don't have to worry about the tube vibrating and popping out. These are seen on various applications and stuff where it is really needed but they don't really take off much. The, then after the 
reign of the seven and nine pin miniatures then came the Compactatrons, which was an attempt, further attempt at miniaturizing vacuum tube circuitry. Often these had two, three, even four active elements in one tube and stuff, which allowed the total tube count of any electronic equipment to be greatly reduced stuff like this one here has two pentodes in it this one here has a tetrode screen power tetrode and a triode in it stuff but the march to miniaturization continued and that led to what was known as the sub-miniature tubes which is things like these here directly heated ones designed to operate on battery power or indirectly heated ones like this here designed to be used in aircraft radios and portable and mobile electronic equipment stuff but often you will not see these out in the open where they can easily be pulled and replaced reason why is because the reliability of these units was getting up to the point that they often just built them into the equipment like here is a part out of an aircraft radio where the tube is literally permanently mounted in place and soldered in place becomes a non-replaceable part of the radio and if any one of the tubes goes bad the radio has to be pulled from service sent in to a manufacturer to have the individual tube replaced another part of the same aircraft radio with the tube you can see it in there permanently mounted in place with the pins drawn out and when they're using circuit boards often permanently soldered into place because the reliability was such that the likelihood of having to replace one of the tubes during the operation of the equipment was relatively small and on the filament operated ones that often had to be replaced more often you'd often see them put in modular self-contained replaceable units like this here an IF amplifier which if you open one of the things up I guess there is an oscillator that has the can removed off the top you'll see the directly heated tube along with the oscillator, transformer, and some of the circuitry here and the trimmer cap to adjust it for its yeah adjust it for its desired operation and that way whenever one of the tubes died you could just pull the entire unit, plug another unit in stuff and looking from the outside there's no real way to tell whether it's transistorized or vacuum tube on the inside stuff. But as the march continued on, one of the last attempts at miniaturizing was what is called the new Vista. It was often, it was basically a last ditch run effort against the transistor to try to maintain a semblance of market share against the upcoming transistor but by that time tubes were already pretty much on the way down so you'll find these some places but it's kind of odd to find run out in the out a piece of electronic equipment you see coming from the field because often 
the equipment they was in is quickly replaced by new transistorized equipment and the total amount of equipment produced with new vistas wasn't exactly that much so it's kind of odd to see equipment often you see them in some tv tuners and stuff for the VHF amplifier stage or the UHF amplifier or oscillator stage but that's about the most often place you'll find these and the reason I just stuck to receiving tubes is because if we got into transmitting tubes then we'd be getting into a whole different ball game transmitting tubes run from the smallest like this 2E26 octal base the 6146 which is often used in a lot of ham radio transmit uh, transceivers or transmitters the old standby 807 which used in a lot of amplifiers and stuff then we could be getting into the slightly more powerful four stair cooled 4CX 350 which is what this one happens to be and then if you really want to get into the big stuff we have slightly bigger tube which this one happens to be a Centron CE 845 that is used in military transmitter and if you compare that to the old 9 pin miniature or especially the new Vister then you can see how wide and varied the type of tube is you will often find in electronic equipment but I'll leave these transmitter tubes to a whole other issue take care Take it easy.